Welcome, join us as we embark on a journey through the captivating life and music of Jerry Rafferty. From his humble beginnings to international acclaim, discover the story behind the iconic singer-songwriter whose timeless songs continue to resonate with audiences around the world. So let's dive in. Jerry Rafferty born Gerald Rafferty on the 16th of April 1947 in Paisley, Renfrewshire, Scotland. Rafferty was born into a working-class family of Irish Catholic descent, the son and grandson of coal miners, he was raised alongside his two brothers, Jim and Joe, in a council house in Fergusley Park. He received his education at St. Mirren's Academy. Rafferty endured a tumultuous upbringing marked by his father's alcoholism and early passing when he was 16. Despite these challenges, Rafferty found inspiration in the folk songs of his Irish and Scottish heritage, taught to him by his parents, remembering his mother's beautiful singing voice. Influenced by iconic artists like the Beatles and Bob Dylan, he began crafting his own music at a young age, setting the stage for his remarkable career as a singer-songwriter. After leaving St. Mirren's Academy in 1963, Rafferty took on various jobs including working in a butcher's shop, as a civil service clerk, and in a shoe shop. However, music remained his true passion, as he explained in interviews, expressing that none of his other jobs were ever intended as long-term careers. Alongside his classmate and future collaborator Joe Egan, Rafferty spent weekends playing in a local band called The Mavericks, covering songs by popular groups like The Beatles and The Rolling Stones. In the mid-1960s, he supplemented his income by busking on the London Underground. By 1966, Rafferty and Egan were part of the band The Fifth Column, releasing a single titled, Benjamin Day, and B-Side, There's Nobody Here, although it failed to achieve commercial success. In 1969, Rafferty joined the folk pop group The Humblebums, alongside comedian Billy Connolly and Tam Harvey. After Harvey's departure, Rafferty and Connolly continued as a duo, recording two more albums for Transatlantic Records. Their 1970 appearance at the Royal Festival Hall garnered positive reviews, with critic Carl Dallas noting Rafferty's songwriting as reminiscent of Paul McCartney's tender melodies. Connolly often reminisced about this time in his stand-up shows, recalling Rafferty's humor and their antics while on tour. After parting ways with Connolly in 1971, Rafferty was signed as a solo artist by transatlantic owner Nathan Joseph. Collaborating with staff producer Hugh Murphy, Rafferty released his debut solo album, Can I Have My Money Back, which Billboard praised as high-grade folk rock and Rafferty's finest work yet, though it didn't achieve commercial success. Around this time, Rafferty stumbled upon Colin Wilson's The Outsider, a book about alienation and creativity, which profoundly influenced his songwriting and worldview. Rafferty himself acknowledged alienation as a persistent theme in his songs, with tracks like, To Each and Every One, from his debut album serving as early examples. In 1972, Rafferty teamed up again with Joe Egan to form Steeler's Wheel after gaining some airplay with his signpost recording, Make You Break You. Collaborating with American songwriters and producers Lieber and Stoller, the group recorded three albums, Steeler's Wheel in 1972, Fergusley Park in 1973 and Right or Wrong in 1975. Steeler's Wheel achieved widespread success with their hit single, Stuck in the Middle with You, praised for its unique blend of Beatles-esque melodies, Dylan-inspired lyrics, and Celtic flavor. The song's prominence in the 1992 film, Reservoir Dogs, solidified its status as a classic, though Rafferty declined permission for its re-release. Steeler's Wheel also produced other hits like, Everyone's Agreed That Everything Will Turn Out Fine, and, Star, but tracks such as, Outside Looking In, and, Who Cares, hinted at Rafferty's growing sense of alienation. The duo disbanded later in 1975, leaving open disputes about the band's remaining contractual recording obligations. Following the dissolution of Steeler's Wheel, legal issues prevented Rafferty from releasing any material for three years. However, in 1978, after resolving the disputes, he collaborated with producer Hugh Murphy on his second solo album, City to City, featuring the iconic track, Baker Street. Despite initial reluctance from the record label, United Artists, to release it as a single, it went on to become Rafferty's signature song. Baker Street, inspired by his experiences navigating legal battles and traveling between Glasgow and London for meetings with lawyers. He often stayed on Baker Street at a friend's flat, where they would sit and chat or play guitar through the night. Rafferty's songwriting captured a sense of liberation. The single soared the charts all over the world, going to number 3 in the UK, number 2 in the US, and number 1 in Australia, while the album sold over 5.5 million copies, surpassing the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack in the US. For Rafferty, this marked his first significant taste of success, transcending past disappointments with previous projects. Featuring a memorable saxophone riff in song Baker Street, played by Raphael Ravenscroft, there were disputed origins. 
Rafferty claimed authorship of the riff, which were proven accurate, appearing in the original electric guitar demo version of the song. Baker Street is a soft rock radio staple, recognized by BMI for surpassing 5 million plays worldwide. Rafferty noted its profitability, earning him about £80,000 annually. Despite loathing a dance cover by Undercover, it brought in £1.5 million, with Rafferty rejecting offers to use Baker Street in advertising. Right down the line, the second single from City to City reached number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart and number 1 on the Hot Adult Contemporary Tracks charts. Rafferty's album, Night Owl, saw success with guitarist Richard Thompson featuring on, Take the Money and Run. The title track reached number 5 in the UK in 1979, while, Days Gone Down, hit number 17 in the US. The subsequent single, Get It Right Next Time, also made it into the UK and US Top 40. Rafferty's later albums, including, Snakes and Ladders, in 1980, Sleepwalking, in 1982, and, North and South, in 1988, experienced less success, partly attributed to his discomfort with live performances. In 1980, Rafferty and Murphy collaborated on a record for Richard and Linda Thompson, which later morphed into their album, Shoot Out the Lights. Sleepwalking marked a departure from Rafferty's usual style, with Christopher Neal replacing Murphy as producer, introducing synthesizers and drum machines for a harder sound. The album's introspective lyrics reflected Rafferty's exhaustion and desire for change, as he sought to move away from the pressures of fame and continue to explore themes of alienation in tracks like, Standing at the Gates, and, Change of Heart. In 1983, Rafferty featured on the soundtrack of the film Local Hero, singing, The Way It Always Starts, written by Mark Knopfler. That same year, he announced a hiatus to prioritize family time, reflecting on his whirlwind touring schedule since the success of, Baker Street. Settling at Thai Farm in Hartfield, he focused on his personal life, installing electric gates for privacy and building a recording studio. Rafferty continued to collaborate with Hugh Murphy, co-producing band, The Proclaimers, with their debut UK hit single, Letter from America, in 1987. According to his former wife Carla, Rafferty was stalling for time, recognizing he had reached a turning point in his music career. He emphasized the distinction between artistic integrity and the industry's focus on celebrity fame and product sales. In a 1988 interview with Colin Irwin, he expressed discomfort with the latter, stating it wasn't for him due to inherent contradictions. Despite mixed reviews, his 1988 album, North and South, showcased Rafferty's interest in production and film soundtracks, even mentioning the possibility of a musical about Robert Louis Stevenson's life. In the early 1990s, Rafferty collaborated with Barbara Dixon on a cover of Bob Dylan's, The Times They Are A-Changing. Dixon, who had previously provided backing vocals for Rafferty's albums, City to City, and Night Owl, included the track on her albums, Don't Think Twice It's All Right in 1992, and later with the Barbara Dixon collection in 2006. Rafferty released two more albums in the 1990s, which marked a significant return to form, according to musician Tom Robinson. On a Wing and a Prayer, in 1992, featured collaborations with his Steelers Wheel partner Joe Egan on several tracks, as well as three songs co-written with his brother Jim, also a singer-songwriter. His album, Over My Head, in 1994, included a new version of his Humble Bum song, Her Father Didn't Like Me Anyway. These albums were the last ones produced with Hugh Murphy, who passed away in 1998, which was a great blow to Rafferty, also ending a creative partnership that spanned nearly 30 years. By the late 1990s, Rafferty embraced new technology, setting up a mobile recording studio with sound engineer Giles Twig in London. They recorded his album, Another World, across various locations, collaborating with musicians like Mark Knopfler and Joe Egan. Rafferty promoted and sold the album independently through his company Icon Music, using a website dedicated to the project. Initially available only through direct orders, Another World eventually found a wider release on the Hypertension label in 2003. With an esoteric vibe and illustrated by John Patrick Byrne, the album marked a departure for Rafferty, who saw it as a direct expression of his creative vision. He embraced this new approach, feeling liberated from the constraints of the traditional music industry. In subsequent years, Rafferty explored free music downloads on his website, although this venture was short-lived, and the website eventually closed without explanation. In November 2009, Rafferty released his last album, Life Goes On, under the Hypertension music label. The album comprises 18 tracks, including six new recordings, covers of Christmas carols, and traditional songs previously available on his website. Additionally, remastered tracks from his previous three albums are featured. Personally, in 1965, when Rafferty was 18, he met Carla Ventilla, 15, 
an apprentice hairdresser of Italian heritage at a dance hall, a story he later immortalized in song, Shipyard Town. They married in 1970, residing in Scotland with their daughter, Martha Mary, before relocating to southern England in the late 1970s. Their life between a farm near the Kent-Sussex border and a Hampstead home inspired many of Rafferty's songs, reflecting his lengthy commutes and the family's experiences. However, their marriage ended in divorce in 1990, attributing mainly to his alcoholism, with Carla later expressing, she would have stayed if there had been even a slight chance of his recovery. Rafferty started drinking at a young age, with early songs openly referencing alcohol, reflecting his long-standing relationship with it. Despite this his manager was unaware of the seriousness of his addiction. The death of his brother Joseph in 1995 deeply affected him, some suggesting he never fully recovered from it. In his later years, Rafferty battled both alcohol addiction and depression, shunning the fame he once had. His struggles, hidden from the public eye, took a toll on his relationships, leaving loved ones feeling helpless amidst his despair. In 2008, Rafferty entered a relationship with Enzina Fushini, who described witnessing his deep despair with alcoholism, feeling as though he was under an evil spell. In July 2008, during a four-day drinking binge at a five-star Westbury Hotel in Mayfair, London, Rafferty damaged his room extensively. The hotel's director, later speaking to The Independent, described Rafferty as a really nice man who kept to himself and didn't disturb other guests. However, he noted that Rafferty was clearly in a downward spiral and seemed to be in self-destruct mode. Reports conflicted about his whereabouts afterward, with some suggesting he checked into a hospital for a liver condition, while others claiming he had disappeared. Eventually, it was revealed he was hiding in the south of England, receiving care from a friend. Despite reports of his well-being and plans to release new music, Rafferty continued to face challenges with alcoholism. It was during this time, he met Enzina Fuscini, an Italian artist, with whom he rented a home in Upton, near Poole, and became engaged on Christmas Eve 2009. In November 2010, Rafferty was admitted to the Royal Bournemouth Hospital due to multiple organ failures, where he was placed on life support. Despite briefly improving, he ultimately succumbed to liver failure on January 4, 2011, at his daughter Martha's home in Stroud, Gloucestershire, at the age of 63. A requiem mass was held for him at St. Mirren's Cathedral in Paisley on January 21, 2011, with notable figures like Alex Salmond and musicians like The Proclaimers and Barbara Dixon in attendance. Rafferty's remains were cremated at the Woodside Crematorium in Paisley, and his ashes were scattered on Iona. He is survived by his daughter Martha, granddaughter Celia, and brother Jim. In October 2011, it was reported that Rafferty's immediate family inherited his £1.25 million estate, as he had not updated his will after meeting Enzina Fuscini in 2008, leaving her nothing. Fuscini contested the will but ultimately lost her case, with £75,000 legal costs awarded against her. In November 2012, Paisley paid tribute to Rafferty by naming a street in the Shortrudes area in his honour, Jerry Rafferty Drive, with director Gordon Laurie described it as a fitting tribute to the musician. On September 3, 2021, Parlophone UK released, Rest in Blue, an album completed by his daughter Martha Rafferty from demos left by her father, showcasing blues, rock, and folk tracks planned for a new album before his passing. And there you have it. As we bid farewell to Jerry Rafferty, his music lives on as a testament to his unparalleled talent and profound impact on the world of music. Thank you for joining us in honoring his life and celebrating the enduring legacy of one of the greatest songwriters of our time. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Take care and bye for now.